The value of art is often subjective, so when it comes to selling art on Facebook Marketplace, anything can go. This means it's super important that you have an optimized listing before you sell your art on Facebook Marketplace. In today's video, we're going to dig into six real-world examples of people selling art on Facebook Marketplace and run it through my seven-point Facebook Marketplace framework to figure out exactly how each of these listings would score. This video is inspired by Allison, who wanted to see me do a breakdown specifically in art when it comes to Facebook Marketplace. My name's Will, and I teach sales, digital marketing, and entrepreneurship on this channel. In case you're new here, tell me what you're selling on Facebook Marketplace so I can help you out. The first example we're gonna look at today is Cactus Framed Art Wall Art Large. Something to note here is that they know that they're doing something right here, and the reason why is because when I searched for frame art in my Facebook Marketplace, this was the very first listing. So right off the bat, we know that something is right here in terms of what they are optimizing for. And the reason why we know this is because all we need to do is look at our first point on the framework, which is the title. In this case, the title is clearly optimized because it tells us exactly what is the actual piece of art, what type of art is it, it's framed art, and it's also large wall art. So in this example, Alex did a great job for making an optimized title. The next thing we're gonna look at is pricing, and in this case, it is crystal clear. It's being sold for $60 down from $80. If I wanted to improve this a little bit more, I would include in my listing whether or not price is negotiable, especially since you've already demonstrated to some extent that it is since you've knocked down the listing from 80 to 60. The next thing we look at are the photos, and I think the photos in general are great here. The reason why is because this seller is showing things like the front, the back, and even the listing of of the original painting when it was being sold in stores. This is great because it clearly also communicates to the potential buyer that they're getting a great deal since they are selling this for $60 as opposed to the $130 that this particular piece of art typically sells for. I personally love how the pictures are taken from the ground. It helps really visualize exactly how large the piece of art is. I don't know if that was intentional or not, but it's something to keep in mind if you are selling art yourself as well. Another thing we look at in our framework is the item condition, and this is clearly tagged because they are using the used good tag in Facebook Marketplace. Overall, for the benefits to the buyer, I think it's about as good as we're gonna get because they have a general descriptor of the overall piece, talking about how it's very classy, and also they talk about the frame itself. Another thing that I really like about this description is that it's helpful in that they're including dimensions of the actual piece. That way, if you're a potential buyer, you can think about the different ways that it might or might not work in your own space. Lastly, when we look at the savings angle, this is clearly covered because of that comparison to the new in-store price. And then in terms of preferred pickup and payment, this is something that is missing in general from the listing. So when we look at this listing, this one actually does a phenomenal job in which it scores six out of seven, where it only loses points when it comes to the preferred payment, as well as pickup and delivery methods. If you've been watching the earlier episodes of the series, you know that we are off to a great start today. So hopefully we can keep this up. Example number two today is the title of Cactus Photo with Gold Frame. I know you're thinking, wait, didn't we just see this? But this is actually another listing of the same piece of framed art. So this is what you get when you buy framed art that is super generic in a store, and it might not necessarily be as unique as you thought. But something that this is helpful for is we can really study these two listings and see exactly where the two are similar as well as different from one another to see exactly what's working for each respective seller. In this situation for this second listing, this was actually at the very bottom of my search results and let's dig into exactly why that is as opposed to the first listing where that was at the very top of my results. Overall, when we look at the title, it's okay. It does cover exactly what's going on in that it's a cactus photo, and they also talk about how there's a frame. However, they don't talk about how it's framed art. A large reason why I think this showed up at the bottom of my results as opposed to at the top is because it's missing that phrase, framed art. So they're gonna miss points for the title here. As we dig into the price here, this is crystal clear, it's $50. The only thing that I'd say is again, if they are open to negotiation, then it'd be helpful to include in the listing itself. As we move along, we'll look at the photos. In this case, it's not as good as the prior listing because it's really hard to conceptualize exactly how large this piece of art is in relationship to a room. Furthermore, the listing fails to include dimensions in the actual description itself, so I have no idea how large this piece of art is. As we move on to the next criteria, the item condition is actually met for points here because they use that tag for like new condition. 
Overall, the benefits to the buyer is also a missing point because they don't include anything in their descriptor. And this clearly hurts them in the search results because they show so poorly in the overall results for framed art. Lastly, when we look at the savings angle, that's also unclear. And then pickup and delivery methods, that is also not addressed. In this situation, this listing only scores points for desired price as well as item condition, and they miss the mark on every other point. This is the same product, but a completely different score. And it's gonna make a drastic difference in terms of which one sells first. Even though the first one is being sold for $60 as opposed to $50, it's very possible that that one will sell before this one just because it's higher up in the search results and someone might not make it all the way to the bottom of the page. If you found these first two examples super helpful in making things crystal clear with your listings, hit that like button below to help other people find this video too. For our third listing today, we're gonna look at this one called Canvas Painting. The title overall is okay, but I think it could be a little bit better. For example, there's no reference in terms of the size of the painting or the condition, or even what type of painting this is. Now, this is included later on in the tags that we'll look into. However, in this situation, they're not gonna score points for the title. The next thing we're gonna look at is the price, and in this case, it is crystal clear it's being listed for $50, originally $100. And that actually leads us to also cover the point for the savings angle because they talk about the original price for the painting. As we dig into the photos, this is where I'd say they are just okay. I'm not gonna give them points here, and that's because the benchmark that was set earlier on was using photos in a way in which it showed a different aspect of the piece with every progressive photo. In this situation, it doesn't really do that, and it also doesn't include anything in terms of dimensions and the listing details, and so it's really hard for me to conceptualize exactly how large this piece of art is and how it might relate into the space that I'm visualizing it in as a potential buyer. The item condition is crystal clear though because they are using the tags. However, the benefits to the buyer are also unclear, mainly because the descriptors itself is not very descriptive. Lastly, thinking about preferred payment and pickup methods, this is also not very clear. So in this situation, this listing only scores three points. One point for the desired price, another one for the item condition, and then lastly, one for the savings angle. This fourth example today is a framed galactic art deco painting, and this listing is just straight up bawling, especially after we've seen some of the worst ones in the last two or so. This is a really great use of getting the type of art in the actual title itself and mentioning how it's framed and the style of that art. So the only thing that I potentially push further is to include the condition in this title, but this title is overall really good. The next thing we'll move into are the tags and the price. I love how these tags are being used. They talk about how it's framed, art deco, painting, stars, art, and they even have more tags that I am not even showing here. And so that's a great way to get picked up by a ton of different searches when people are searching for framed art. Furthermore, the price is crystal clear. The only thing I'd say is what I've said a few times now, which is whether or not you're open to negotiation. As we dig into the photos though, this is where I really think they're fantastic and differentiated from everything else you've seen today. I want you to notice how the seller takes different perspectives as she shows you more about the art with each progressive photo. This is exactly what you wanna do if you're selling something like art on Facebook Marketplace. This helps you visualize exactly what type of art that you're buying and get you excited about actually buying that perspective item. The item condition is crystal clear because they're using the tag for good. And then the benefits to the buyer is also a lot more clear than other listings because they're talking about how it's a very unique piece of art. And so that is still a lot better than some of the earlier listings. So I'm gonna give it points there. However, this could be improved upon if we were to elaborate a little bit more and say maybe how this piece could be a great piece to hang in a XYZ room and so on. Lastly, when we look at savings angle as well as preferred payment and pickup delivery methods, those aren't really addressed. So Overall, this listing scores five out of seven in my framework, and it's really clear to me why this seller has 53 positive ratings on Facebook Marketplace. They know exactly what they need to do to push their pieces out, and that's reflected by their sales numbers and their past seller history. Guys, something I need you to realize is that pretty much every single item that I have looked at that scores five plus in my framework has also corresponded with a seller that has five star feedback consistently. So use this framework because I promise you it will sell you more things on Facebook. Our second to last example today is large forest painting. The title is okay, but it's not gonna score points, mainly because it could mention how it's a framed piece of art, which it clearly is, as well as the condition of the actual piece. Looking at the price, this is super clear, and I also like how the dimensions are included in the listing itself. Overall, the seller does a great job at showing different angles in the photos. This is a great way to really show this piece because they show how nuanced the actual artwork is itself. Just looking at this last photo in this listing in which it shows the texture, I think that our third listing with that canvas painting could have benefited from this same effect if they had just 
taken a little bit more time with their photos there. With this forest painting, the condition is tagged. However, benefits to the buyer are unclear, and also the savings angle is also unclear. So it is clear that it's been marked down from the $200, but it's not really clear as to how much this originally was and things like that. Payment method isn't addressed, but pickup is. This is a half mark at best, but my mom taught me that it's either 100% or nothing, so they're not gonna earn points here. So when we look at the framework here, they're gonna score points in terms of desired price, photos, as well as item condition. However, they will miss marks on everything else here. What I want you to take away from this listing though is that it actually has a ton of promise. And just with a few small tweaks where it might take two to three minutes or so, this could clearly be popping and selling quickly on Facebook Marketplace. Our sixth example for today is just called Wall art and something that you're gonna see is that this one was hilarious to me because of just how bad it was for obvious reasons so right off the bat looking at the title it's really bad because it doesn't describe exactly what the piece of art is how it's a scenic landscape or even how it's framed at all so they miss points there and then digging into the price that is actually clear it's being listed for $50 as we move on into the condition side of things though this is where things start to get really confusing because they use the tag for like new however they talk about how it's in good condition when it's in the actual description itself. The benefits to the buyer is also not clear. Saying something looks great is not a good enough descriptor here. The savings angle is also unclear in this situation. When we look at preferred payment and pickup, Preferred payment is definitely unclear. Pickup is kind of mentioned because they say you come pick up, but you could try to be a little bit more customer friendly when you're asking somebody to buy something from you. So they really don't make the mark here in terms of this part of the framework. Most importantly though, the photos need some work. It really doesn't take all that much extra effort to click that rotate button to get the listing in a place where the buyer doesn't have to strain their neck to see exactly what they're looking at. This is easily the worst listing I've seen today, and it's really unfortunate because this piece of art is actually pretty interesting and the frame itself is really nice. I think that this could sell really easily on Facebook Marketplace if the seller were just willing to try a little bit more. But I wanna hear from you. Tell me if you guys think that this listing could sell a lot more effectively with a better listing. If you made it this far in this video, you are the real MVP. Hit that like button below to get your blue thumbs up trophy for watching to this point in the video. If you wanna get this Facebook Marketplace framework for your own listings, check out the download in the video description below. This wraps up my mini series for Facebook Marketplace Fridays. If you missed an earlier episode, be sure to check those out. And if you want more, be sure to tell me in the comments below and maybe I'll consider it in the future. That's it for this time though. I'll see you guys next week. And while you wait, check out these videos that YouTube thinks you might like.